There may be times when you'd like to change or modify the results of your query by perhaps sorting the data, adding totals, or choosing the top and bottom number of elements based on a specific strategy. To do these kinds of things, we use our result manipulation options that can be found here. So let's take a look at these now. Firstly, we can sort. So we can choose an alphabetical or a numerical sort, or even an advanced sort based on a specific strategy. We can add grand totals and subtotals to our result, like so. We can choose the top and bottom number of elements. So here I'm going to select the top three elements. And there you have it. But what about if we wanted to see the top three by supply type in this case? To do so, we're going to need to change the strategy of our top bottom. So we're going to change from auto to per block on rows. Which will give us the required result. However, these results, this uh, top three, is based purely on the first column in the result. In order for it to be based on the total result, the global result, we'll need to aggregate values. And there you have our top three countries per supply type based on the total result. Next we have a measure filter. A measure filter allows you to do just that. Select a range of values on which the result will be filtered. So here, for example, I'm going to choose everything above 100,000. When I apply, the result below will be taken out. Next, we have a result path calculation. By default, it's set to none, but you have the option to apply percent of total, difference, percent of difference, percent, running total, replace empty cells, rank, and percentile. Here, we're going to change the uh, pattern to percent of difference. It will be based on columns, so that's the years, and based on the previous element. When we apply this, we'll see the result is changed. Let's just clean this up a bit. We'll take off the grand total on columns. And we will, in our chart configuration options, we have the capacity to hide specific columns, like so, and even add arrows based on whether the data is positive or negative. A result measure calculation allows you to use the result to create a calculation. So we're going to, in this case, add a new measure, and we're going to call this revenue minus staff costs. The formula for this will be simple, sum revenue minus sum staff costs. We have the option to add it as a third measure into our query, or we can clear the measures that are used in the calculation to leave only this new result measure calculation, like so. The result measure calculation can obviously only use the measures and elements that are available in the query result. We can choose to hide parts of the result as well, maybe the first or last number of rows or columns, or specific rows here and columns. Next, we'll look at forecast. The forecast result manipulation option allows you to add predictive analysis to your queries. Here we have a line chart, revenue, by year and month. We can choose to forecast for a certain period in the future. So by using our forecast option, we'll calculate a forecast on the result. It's going to be on columns, which is where our year and months are. We can have 
two different types of method applied, additive trend and multiplicative season, or additive trend and additive season. We can choose the auto values by default, or choose the custom values. That's to say the number of values to predict and the number of values per cycle your data contains. Here we're going to stick with the auto options and apply. And you can now see the dotted line is our forecast. The time axis option allows you to display empty time elements. That's to say dates that are missing in your data set. This applies only when you're using the date part of a temporal dimension. The final result manipulation option is the order in which the results are applied. So here I've hidden some elements and applied measure calculation. You can change the order in which they're applied here, which may in turn obviously change the result.